Hey, staff creators. My name's Lauren Kaysen. I was one of the first seven creators to get the chance to play with the new spectacles. And I'm gonna be talking to you a little bit today about my experience building for them. So let's get started. First question is, can you explain the process of how you went from creating in Lens Studio to testing on the spectacles? And was it quick to learn? Once the spectacles are paired to the phone, and if you have Lens Studio set up with your Snap account, then it's, it's all pretty simple from that point. There's a button in Lens Studio that you can click, and that will send your experiences directly to the spectacles. One of the other things that's really cool is videos that I take on the spectacles go directly to my Snap account. So it's really, really easy for me to take video and then send that to myself. Um, and again, just be iterating really, really quickly, which is super cool. How did you feel about the field of view and the spectacles? Was it limiting? I didn't find it that limiting. Um, I also, you know, I remember working with the HoloLens 1. I'd say that the field of view isn't that much smaller than a HoloLens 1. It feels comparable to me, but you know, it's been a minute since I worked with one of those. Um, but with any device that has a smaller field of view, I think the, the people you have to worry about the most are people who aren't familiar with headsets. And I think making sure that when people first open up the headset, when they first put it on, when they're first going through your experience, that they are going to be seeing the full object, the full experience. So you don't have things cut off when they first start their experience, right? Because if they turn it on and they're seeing, they're like, Lauren, there's this hard edge on this object and they think it's actually broken. And you're like, no, no, it's not broken. Actually, that's that's just kind of how those headsets work. Um, and then they've missed the entire onboarding because they're trying to tell you about a bug that they saw. So I think it's good to get people in, give them a chance to get used to the device um, and make sure that when you do that, you're not raising that question immediately about like, what's going on with the field of view? Why is there this hard line? So that's my two cents. That's what I've seen work when I've worked with people who haven't worn one of these before. How have the new spectacles helped to achieve your goal of being human first? So I think that glasses as a form factor are just very human especially compared to a phone. Like phones are so weird uh, if you think about it. Um, they're these like magical, shiny glass rectangles that, uh, that are illuminated um, and that we stare into. It's like so weird. And glasses, they're just a way of augmenting our body that we've been doing for a really long time, right? Like I don't actually know how old glasses are, I imagine this is something that we've been doing for a very long time. And in terms of the way that you can move your body as well when you're wearing spectacles and glasses versus using a phone. Um, in a previous life, I was a dance teacher and phones, I think, tend to really limit the way that we move our bodies. Um, you're sort of limited to, to uh, your elbow and your wrist um, and you're, you know, maybe you're doing a little bit of this and hunching, but if you have glasses on, um, I can be moving in all sorts of ways that are exciting and cool and um, just like a very different way of having an experience with a piece of technology. I think it's human first because it helps us be more embodied um, and it also helps us be eyes up here, you know. Uh, I can be getting information from from my spectacles, but also be looking up and out into the world and at the people around me and the space around me, right? So I love experiences which get you embodied, which are making you more aware of your physical space or about the things that you're touching or that you're in front of or the world that you're in or the dirt that you're standing on. Like that's what's really exciting to me about spatial computing and spectacles. What features did I use in the creation of this project? So this project relied really heavily on image tracking. Um, so I believe there's a template for that in Lens Studio. It swaps between image and world tracking and that makes the tracking a lot more stable. Outside of that, my project was actually technically fairly simple. Most of what I did, it was built in Maya, the animations were done um, and 
Maya a little bit with some scripting in Lens Studio and then um, some music that I wrote in GarageBand on Audacity and and also some recordings from a local New Mexican poet, Ebony Isis Booth, who she did a recording of Anita Scott Coleman's poem for my Anita piece that I worked on with her. Why do I care about AR overlaid on the world? So if up here we have like happy technological utopia, we did everything right, everything is happy and it's only improving our lives. And down here we have a dystopic hellscape. Um, and this is, this is time. So, you know, let's say we're right here. Um, we're right in the middle. Well, if at the beginning we, we boop, like do some work to, to make it a little bit more utopic, a little bit more friendly or human centered or inclusive, we're going to get payouts and dividends down the road here, right? Like changing the trajectory just a little bit right here makes a real big difference later. We haven't quite decided yet how it's going to be world changing technology. We're still at the beginning phases. We still have the chance to decide how we're going to use this and what it's for. Lastly, where can I get access to the new spectacles? So you can get access to the new spectacles in two ways. So the first is you can go to the Spectacles website. So that is www.spectacles.com slash new dash spectacles. And you can apply just to apply to get a pair of spectacles. So if you haven't done it and you think you want access to the spectacles, you should definitely do it. I've been telling everybody to do it. Uh, and then the other way is you can apply for a Ghost Lab Fellowship. So they are handing out, um, through Ghost Labs, awards between $15,000 and $150,000 to work on projects. And one of the verticals that they have is for the spectacles. So if you have a really cool spectacles idea, then you should apply for a Ghost Lab Fellowship and you might get some spectacles and also some money, which is like super cool. Everybody loves money for their projects. Um, and that is all I have for you. So thank you so much for listening to me babble on about augmented reality and spectacles. All right. Bye.